What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a review for Love and Hip Hop New York, Season 9, The Reunion Part 2. So, I am going to try not to complain throughout these three videos that I have to do today. That's right, you guys. Mona gave us three fucking hours of Love and Hip Hop last night. I'm convinced the lady is trying to dumb down the entire nation. <laughs> Child, it was way too much ignorance for one night to stand. I was just like, you guys really want us to be... Okay, all right. I said I wasn't going to complain, right? We're going to get through the videos. Three is a lot. Uh, I don't really know what Miami Part 1 reunion video is going to be like today. I can promise you guys that it ain't going to be much uh, imitation um, uh, of any of the characters today. Because, fuck, I got to get through three videos in an hour. I'm on my lunch break, y'all. So, um, <clears throat> without any further ado, let's get to it, shall we? Child, y'all to see these notes. Ugh. Okay, so the show starts where it ended. Remember last week it was all this, you know, we got eyes on Safari. Safari Samuels is in the building. So Safari comes out there. He's got on his glasses already. His defenses are up. We can tell. Um, I was worried that Safari was going to get up there and um, kind of bitch out a little bit, you know, do more pouting. Um, not take up for himself, but no, we, we didn't get that Safari Samuels. Um, and I actually was quite pleased with the way he was acting. Now, I mean, he was very, very defensive, but the way that everybody came at him when they were on the trip to Costa Rica, I, I honestly can't blame him for feeling the way that he felt, okay? Now, <clears throat> you got Joe and Sin on one side, you got Safari over here, you got Rich over there. Nina's asking him why his lady said he had a family emergency, we know that's bullshit, okay? Um, she tries to soften him up. You know, uh, your friends, they, they count on you, and when you don't express yourself or you don't say anything, you know, that kind of hurts them. Are you referring to Erica? Why is it that he has to let anybody know? I mean, if he does, cool. That's fine. But if he doesn't, cool. That's fine, too. He was like, none of these people are really my friend like that, like that. I've learned that over time. Okay, well, what about Juju? Oh, yeah, Juju was cool. Okay, but... <laughs> Ain't, you know, we, we just, whatever. It, it ain't nothing that he feels like he's got to be saying anything, even to Juju. So what's the current status of uh, him and, and Joe? Joe said he doesn't wish him any ill will. Okay, he just kind of insinuated that now he knows that Safari is not his real friend. Now, Safari says, you know what? Joe has a lot of nerve because he definitely turned up for the camera. Okay, when we were in Costa Rica, we was on the bus ride going to the beach. He never said anything to me. He waited until we got to the beach. Then all of a sudden, he started all the hoopla going on and on about mushing my face in the sand and all of that. You know, he was waiting for ready, set, action. <laughs> Is that what they say when they clamp the thing? Um, instead of just talking to me, okay? And all that bravado, all of that coming in my face, you know, talking to me, clapping and shit, you know, that's disrespectful. We had Sin, who I understand Sin likes to portray herself as the ride or die. You know, that kind of comes with that age a lot of times. Um, not necessarily, but but you guys understand what I'm saying. As you get older, you know, fuck a ride or die. But when I'm looking at her, you know, and she's jumping in like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, we need to talk about this. There's no reason to be... He was just like, stay out of it. And yes, women need to stay out of grown man's business. All right? If it's really not pertaining to you, there's absolutely no reason why you need to jump in. Her saying, oh, if you and, and Joe got beef, then me, you, and Joe got beef or a problem. But what's going to happen when Sin says something smart to Safari and Safari says some slick shit back to her and now Joe got to get into a fight with Safari because of something his woman said when really she should have shut the fuck up to begin with and let them handle it. This is how a lot of women get men dragged into fights. And that shit can end in death. So women need to not do that. All right? That gets on my fucking nerves. And even a couple of times, you know, Joe was like, don't don't say anything. Don't make me have to fuck him up or something like that. You know, I, I'm not sure what kind of fighter either Joe or um, Safari are. But Sin definitely didn't need to be in the middle of it. And it just really got on my nerves, this whole, you know, I'm grown. And, you know, we're we going to take the mature route. And I was just like... 
So, Safari felt like Joe was mad extra. Joe said that um, he was not being extra. You know, security, crazy 88s, you guys ain't got to worry about me. I make way too much money to even fight him, okay? But Safari was like, nigga, we can take it outside, okay? I'll pull up at the hotel. I said, Safari, you ain't got to do all that now. Don't get your ass arrested. It finally came to the point where Safari, he, you know, he he kind of seems like the type that's non-confrontational until you get pushed into a corner. And I was really glad that Yandy and um, uh, Remy both were like, what is the big deal? The man didn't want to bring his woman around because he wants to protect that. She was not seen by anybody. Remember, we was trying to figure out if she and, and Sin had hung out at the at the um hot tub and all of that shit when Joe got mad at Sin. Okay, no, that didn't happen. She was not seen by anybody. Okay, so why the fuck is we this goddamn mad? All right, so he was turned up tonight. Safari was. I was here for it. Um, maybe it was a little bit extra, but you know, when Sin was like, I don't even know who this is right now. He's not the person that came over and held our baby. Safari was like, cause I'm on the defensive, like everybody is coming at me. How do you expect me to be when a motherfucker just trying to rub coconut oil on his body and say, shit? <laughs> That was pretty good, right? He wants to live his life that way. Let him be with his woman. Why I got to be fucking arguing and shit with you guys is exactly the reason why I didn't say anything. And it's still happening. He's arguing over his now fiance. Now, Rich, how did you feel about it? Richie was like, it's not really that big of a deal. I kind of, you know, me and Safari, we wasn't friends like that. Okay, so if you really wasn't friends, then he really don't owe you nothing. But Richie was just like, it's been so long since me and Erica have been together. You know, she's been with plenty of other men since me, okay? Kind of making it seem like she's a hoe. And, uh, of course, Safari's not going to sit there and take that. He's yelling at him. He's telling him he's disrespectful. Like, you know, fuck you. How you going to say that about somebody's girl? And Richie was like, we doing this now? We doing this now? <laughs> I said, nigga, you better remember you is old, okay? Fuck you about to do. He jumped up like he gonna run across the table, you know, shaking his shit. <laughs> and Safari said his pants was too tight. His ankles was showing. Oh, my God. That Richie was so stupid looking, jumping up like he was going to do something. You're not going to do nothing. The crazy 88s are not going to let you do nothing. You just erased your temper. I know they had to get that nigga back there and check his glucose and everything and make sure that he was straight. I said, man, don't be up here. You sickly. You don't need to be trying to fight no fucking body. That's a bird made us. He's like, look at him running slow motion. <laughs> he said, did you twist your ankles? <laughs> I was cracking. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that shit was funny to me and richie goes back you know stage and now he ain't old man richie d you know he ain't richie d you know the whole whole king of the uh creep squad <laughs> he is now richie d from the east side east side of where or what i'm not quite sure but yeah he he east side richie d right now you know and we can do this Go sit it down. And when they finally got the stage back calm, Safari was just like, he was out of place. Like, I wouldn't say that about nobody's woman. She ain't even here, okay? She is not even on the show. And it's all this fuss and stuff. So, you know, I'm sure Safari had sat down with his girl and was like, don't worry, baby, I'm going to hold you down. And um, a lot of people probably didn't like his approach, but I was fine. I was fine with it. And Joey sat there and was pretty quiet after a while because I think he realized, like, okay, we just way too emotional about this. It is not that serious. You ain't got to like his woman, but you ain't got to be sitting up here cussing the nigga out and going off on and talking about you going to whoop his ass and push his face in the sand and all of that. It was funny what Joey said. Ain't no sand here. <laughs> Woo, child, I did get a little kick out of that uh, very beginning, but... You know, let Safari live. I'm glad that Yandy and Remy did lend a little bit of um, uh, not a popular opinion there so that they can realize that maybe you just you doing too much. Now, Jonathan, first things first, where's Anais? I had totally forgot about Anais. You guys mentioned in my comments last week, like, where's Anais? Okay, well, it, it, it seems like the issues that Anais was really having were really true. She was having some mental struggles, um, and she had to pull herself from the show. Jonathan says that now she's better. Old man Richie D says he does keep in touch with her, and she's, you know, coming back, you know, bigger and stronger. Anais was very um, talented. I feel bad for her because 
Um, she had real, real issues. And once they get off of the show, you really know something is going on there. So we hope that Anais is going to be better. Maybe she'll be back next season. As far as, as, far as Jonathan and Juju's friendship, she says that, um, you know, she's always going to be a true friend. He says he should have never said that about Juju. Yes, he was upset with her, but she didn't deserve that. She's not fake. She's not phony. He was on drugs and a little bit of everything else. He didn't really behave like a crackhead to me, but I mean, let Jonathan tell it. He was really on drugs. Jonathan always got all of this, you know, real extra heavy shit going on. Remember last season, it was the stuff that happened to him when he was a child. This time he's on drugs. Like, you sure look good for somebody that's been through so much. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying that it isn't true, but I'm just saying. Rich even co-signs on Jonathan and says, you know what, when Jonathan is in his regular lucid, cohesive mind, you know, he has a whole bunch of sense. When he be wilding out and doing whatever he wants to do, I, I said, that's called showboating. That's trying to get attention. That's trying to get camera time. I didn't see it as somebody that was fucking on drugs, but again, I'm just the viewer. I'm just the viewer, Mona. Sydney chimes in and she says, you are messy, though. And I guess she thought he was going to co-sign. He was like, well, what are you? Okay, you are just a train wreck. Okay, you was out there. You was trying to goop the girls. And you was trying to get the money and all this. And I was just like, wait a minute. Even Richie D was like, you're doing too much, Jonathan. Well, why you got to tell me to, you know, do a, act a certain way and not sit? I said... The way he went off on Sydney Star, and you guys saw how she retreated. I told you guys, Sydney is not about that life, okay? And for him to jump all over her like that, what the fuck is wrong with you? Nigga, if you don't calm the fuck down, shit. And hell, I thought that um he was good friends with Sydney Star. So I, I didn't even understand what why all of a sudden he felt like he had to, to jump off on her like that. Then we went on to <laughs> Mariah Lynn and Nia Lee. Let me tell y'all something. Nia Lee may have gotten on my nerves a little bit this season. Not as much as she has in the past. You know, Nia Lee is a work in progress, and I'll give her that space to try to make some changes, okay? But, bitch, when I tell you that Nia Lee knows how to read a motherfucker, and I'm talking about that hood read <laughs> shit oh the shit that she said to Mariah Lynn I tell you I was like girl I'm gonna have to write some of this shit down and save it for myself they showed a whole clip about Mariah Lynn coming back to the table when they was at the winery and you know um uh 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 uh, uh Nia Lee had said to Jonathan something along the lines like woo child like okay a whole lot going on you know Mariah Lynn comes back well Mariah Mariah Lynn explains that she just wanted to get clarification. She didn't come back to try to fight nobody, okay? She wasn't going to throw her purse. She wasn't doing anything. She was just coming back to see what Nia Lee has said. <laughs> Nia Lee was like, see, bitch, I was trying to make light of the situation. And I was talking to Jonathan. If I'm trying to come for your ass, I'm not going to walk around the situation. I'm going to come straight at your ass. This is a fucking pit bull, bitch. You is a chihuahua. And this is what the fuck is wrong with bitches like you. You guys come around and you bark and you chop, chop, chop at somebody. And then when a motherfucker come back at your little barking ass and tear your ass to pieces, then all of a sudden you can't handle it. If you you running up on me, bitch, you want to fight. And I don't give a fuck who you are. You can be a little baby and I'm going to knock your ass down. <laughs> I said, no, little Tom Tom. You going to knock Tom Tom down too? <laughs> Child, I was cracking up. Oh, shit. And Mariah Lynn was over there trying to say something back to her. Yeah, I am a little chihuahua, but when I bark, I bite, bitch. A chihuahua ain't going to do shit to a pit bull. That damn Nia Lee made her look so fucking stupid up there she was so ready for that ass okay she was like i ain't said shit about her you know i could have said a whole lot i couldn't i didn't say nothing about her crackhead ass mama i ain't said shit about her family <laughs> i said that's kind of saying something about him now naya it just went real far you know mariah lynn see she why she gotta talk about my family you know you gotta talk about my family that's a train in the background but um see this is the difference when you really fucking with a hood bitch like naya Okay, nigga, when it's time to fight, we ain't pulling no punches. And Lord, I mean, I was really in awe of the shit that Naya said. <laughs> I was like, I want to be able to do shit like that. Mariah Lynn did try to remind her at the end that this is her show. Okay, that, uh, you know, Naya Lee is just a friend. I said, girl, you just a friend this season too. Okay, 
Ooh wee. You was molded, scratched that neck. <laughs> now Maggie, Mano, I like them as a couple. Okay, I don't, I don't really know what's going on with me and Mano, y'all. But okay, I like them as a couple. I really feel like Maggie needs therapy. We've heard about her being paralyzed in this PTSD all season. Okay, I know what she wants to do, but what she can do at this moment is nothing because everything reminds her of her PTSD, what she went through. And I'm not going to say that the girl um, shouldn't be affected by what happened to her. I've never been shot, but I can imagine the stress that they can bring on somebody's life, especially if you are in an industry where there's always a lot of people gathered and things like that can always pop off. So I'm not going to knock it. I'm just saying, girl, you want to sing, you want to dance, you done did all this training, you went to school for it, you know, you was really on the right track and then you got shot and it, it stopped everything up. You need to go to therapy, okay? Her wants and what she can do is just not matching up. And Maino is trying to be the supportive boyfriend and, you know, he, he, he really wants to be with her, you know, it's not time to get married yet, you know, they good in their relationship right now, but you know, eventually that, that could be something they move towards. Even Jewel's had to chime in and say how Mano has settled down quite a bit. Okay, well that happens, motherfuckers get old, you can't be out there banging still at 40, 50 fucking years old. Now yeah, it's time to move on to the next page. So, um... Yeah, we grown. It's time to do shit a little differently. Mano been in jail, did that. Okay, maybe you can try to do this documentary thing. But as far as Maggie is concerned, I really want the girl to get some help. Now, old man Richie D, you guys know he's stressed out about his baby mama and his daughter. Um, and namely because baby mama is really, really in trouble. And if his daughter, you know, she goes to jail... Her, the daughter is going to want to take care of her siblings. But Richie D was just like, oh, no, she's not doing that. You know, she's going to have to take care of herself first. You can't take care of anybody else um, if you don't take care of yourself first. Now, that's easier said than done. And I don't even know if I was in Ashley's place, if something happened to my mother and I had to take care of my siblings. That's just something that I would have had to do. Chalk it up. It's the time to switch it up, okay? So I don't really know exactly what influence Richie D is going to have on his daughter when it comes to her sisters. That's not his kids, but those are her sisters. Okay, so uh, we'll see what happens there. But I was it was interesting to know when they asked Remy, you know, how does this affect the family, you know, when somebody potentially is fighting a case and may go to jail, may not. Remy says she needs to take the plea. Okay, you are putting everybody through a whole lot of shit and you still might end up in jail. All right. Now, I don't know the particulars on this case other than she shot the man and there was some domestic violence in the past. Okay, but we've seen plenty of times women go to jail for shooting a man or shooting at a man. You guys remember that uh, case go to jail plenty of times. When there was domestic violence in the past. So, yeah, Remy said he needs to, she needs to take the plea. When they asked Kimbella how hard has it been, she says it's been very hard on the family. Because you just don't know from day to day. You are living your life with the chance of knowing that your mate is probably going to go to jail for a long ass time. And it's going to all fall on you. So that is stressful. So Kim understands both sides. And then Yandy says, yeah, it's stressful. It's hard on the family. Okay, Ashley is only 19, 20 years old, somewhere in there. You need to go down there and be with her if you really this upset or really this worried about what's going on there then no phone call is gonna help you need to be there to hold her hand through everything so that is old man richie d's plight now next we have remy and pap it's the golden child it's all the talk about reminisce i was thinking that that was the sister's name that's actually remy's name so the baby is a junior of sorts, and Remy says that she's a better her, better version of her mother. Because the baby won't be in the streets, and the baby will have many other opportunities that was not afforded Remy when she was that young. We touch on Remy and her hemorrhaging, you know, how she got sick right after she had the baby, and her life was kind of on the line a little bit, and everybody was worried it was touch and go for a minute, but once they got it under control, you know, now she kind of ready to maybe possibly have another baby. She even promised Pap, and he told us proudly, 
apparently that um, if he don't act a fucking fool with this baby, you know, she'll probably be ready to have another one in 2020. I mean, Remy seemed to have a perfectly easy pregnancy. I don't know the behind the scenes, but she was tiny. She still looked little, okay? She didn't look bad. She didn't look tired. She still worked all the way through. So, um, good for them. Hopefully, they'll have another baby. Seems like they both would like that. Then we get to Alexa Sky, <clears throat> and um, first things first, Nina asked her, you know, what did you think about people coming at you and saying, oh my gosh, she's on Medicaid, and she was like, first the fuck all, okay, my child was born, she was a pound and a half, give or take a couple of um, ounces, you know, it is expensive for a child to be in NICU. Every damn day, $20,000, who got that kind of money? If the government is going to give me the money or the help needed to make sure that my child gets all of the medical, um, uh, 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 get all of her medical needs serviced, all right, and that she is taken care of, um, then I am going to take it. And anybody out there that got something stupid to say about that, they just stupid. Okay, and we already discussed that back when, you know, everybody was like, oh my God, Medicaid, all right? My friend... I won't say her name because I hadn't didn't ask her if I could, but she had her baby premature. He was in NICU. I remember being at her house and she showed me the bill, and the NICU bill was something like nine hundred thousand fucking dollars. Nine hundred thousand fucking dollars. Now her husband was in the military, so they didn't have to fool with the bill, but she still got the bill. And I was just like, and he was all. I mean, he was in there for like a month. Um, but can you imagine nine hundred thousand dollars? Okay, so yeah, Medicaid, please, thank you. As far as who the daddy is, she said, listen, I always knew that it was Willie Wop. Okay, Willie Wop knew it was Willie Wop. Solo Coochie knew that it was Willie Wop, but Solo Coochie was really pushing that agenda because it was keeping them out there. Okay, well, did Willie Wop start to question who whose child it was? Well, of course he did because you got everybody out there, social media, you know, even Solo Coochie trying to say that he might be the daddy or that he is the daddy, you know, that of course he started to kind of not be sure. But I knew um, according to the times that we were together, yeah, I fucked with Solo Coochie, okay, she's not trying to deny that, but I also know the times when I was fooling around with Willie Wop, and Willie Wop knew that, okay, so, yeah, we, we, you know, I'm, I ain't got time to be fussing back and forth with everybody, and that's why, you know what, now shit is straight, okay, we done took the test, Coochie ain't the daddy, Willie is, all right, Willie is there for his daughter, okay, his daughter is very healthy right now, okay, I'm in a happy, healthy relationship, we done moved the fuck on, I was like, okay, all right, I know you guys still got problems with Alexa Sky, but I do like Alexa Sky. I even tweeted that, and she retweeted it last night, I was like, ain't this nice, I like that girl, you guys, she got some growing to do, but... I mean, her head don't seem to be on that fucked up. I know y'all don't get in my comments and be like, No, Roxanne, she still be out there saying. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we close um, out with um, everybody saying at the end of the day. All right. What exactly have they learned in this you know, this here season of Love and Hip Hop. And everybody got their little things that they say, you know, is we're all human. We share the same struggles. Okay, we should support each other. Pap shows his new shoes that's coming out, Black Love. Jewel says that um, life is short. Got to stop being so defensive. All right, that we just need to be able to live in harmony. Um, you know, all this, child, it got real deep. Or at least they tried to get real deep. Um, especially with the fact that Jewels is about to take that ass on down to the jailhouse. But, um, yeah, you guys, that, that was pretty much it. That was pretty much it for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 9. So let's get to Miami. All right, you guys, so I got through that video. That's one down, two more to go. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is Forest Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.